Welcome to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to look at one of the most amazing asterisms in the Northern Hemisphere night sky, known as Orion's Sword, which is found in the constellation Orion. The best time of year to view this constellation is in the winter months, when Orion is highest in the sky and makes a great binocular or telescope target. A good way to find the constellation Orion is to first find the Pleiades star cluster, also known as the Seven Sisters, and head slightly south and east. The constellation itself does resemble a person, with a distinctive belt consisting of three equidistant stars. Once you have found Orion's belt, head south and dangling from it, you will see another three fainter stars in a row. This is Orion's sword and contains some of the most amazing sights in the night sky including the Orion Nebula, which is the most famous nebula in the Northern Hemisphere. I am now going to head down the sword and inspect each celestial phenomenon in turn. One useful feature of the asterism is that so many of the features are so close together. You can just move between the stars and the sword. Because of this, the map has only stars even though some of the stars have nebula around them. This is because some of the nebulosity will not show up, depending on what astronomy equipment you use. So let's move to our first target at the northern tip of Orion's sword, NGC 1981. NGC 1981 should look like this through your telescope or binoculars. As you can see, it is an open cluster. However, if you use a low enough exposure, you may be able to see some of the nebulosity around it as it is on the border of the nebulous region of Orion. So let's move on to the next target in Orion's sword, the Running Man Nebula. This consists of NGC 1973, NGC 1975 and NGC 1977. From now on I will just refer to it as the Running Man Nebula rather than the individual designations for simplicity. It is possible to see the Running Man Nebula in medium and large aperture telescopes in a dark sky site. However, it is best suited as a target for astrophotography, as it is not a particularly bright object. As you can see in this image, it is made up from three nebula and separated by dark lanes. However, it is not entirely obvious, so here is an image of the separate nebula labelled for you. As you can see, NGC 1975 is located at the top of the image, while NGC 1973 is to the right and NGC 1977 is to the bottom of the image. The next object in the Orion sword I'm going to look at is the M43 and M42 nebulas. M42 is also known as the Orion's nebula. I'm dealing with both M42 and M43 together because they're both part of the same nebula. This video clip shows what you can see with an O3 filter. However, as you can see, it seems to hide the M43 nebula. This filter is usually good at bringing out features in nebulas, and it does show more cloud structure in this stacked image, compared to the next more panoramic image, including the trapezium, which is the small cluster of stars at the centre of the nebula. More on this in a minute. So, instead, I removed the O3 filter and captured the Orion nebula without, as you can see in this amazing image. The cloud visible in this image is approximately 20 light years across. However, using a radio telescope indicates that the nebula cloud is at least 100 light years across. This region of space is an area of active star formation, where the gas of the nebula is being illuminated by newly formed stars. The nebula is 1,350 light years away from us. So now, Let's label each part of the nebula. The first is M43 at the top of the image, and as you can see, it is separated from M42 by a dark plane. It is an apparent magnitude of 9 and is visible in the dark sky with binoculars. However, some of the elongated wisps of structure require larger instruments or astrophotography. M42 has an apparent magnitude of 4 and is actually visible to the naked eye in a dark sky location. It should be easily visible in all telescopes and binoculars. The final part of the image, the trapezium, is obscured by the length of the exposure used to bring out the details of the nebula, and is actually better shown in the previous image. 
The trapezium is an open cluster of approximately 300 newly formed stars. However, you are only likely to see 4 to 6 stars depending on your astronomy equipment. So finally, let's move on to the final object in Orion's sword, another open cluster, NGC 1980. This is another open cluster located around the brightest star shown in the image, Iota Orionis. While the cluster looks like it is part of the Orion Nebula, it's actually a separate cluster located in closer to us than the nebula itself. Well, that's all for another episode. Please comment if you've got any questions, like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for more astronomy videos. Goodbye and clear skies.